Hello and welcome back. We have seen how to use pointers in C. Let us now see the different types of pointers that we have in C. So the first type that we have is the wild pointer. Then we have a null pointer. Then we have dangling pointer and a void pointer. Let's see them one by one what they mean and what they do. First off is the wild pointer. Wild pointers are pointers that are not initialized. So when we declare a pointer and we do not initialize them they are called wild pointers these pointers may be initialized to a non null garbage value which may not be a valid address let's take an example say in star p so we are declaring a pointer here but we are not assigning any memory location to this pointer and now when we assign a value to this memory location that is star p equals to 10 we don't know to which location this value 10 is going to be written to since we have not initialized this pointer, this is called a wild pointer. Now let us consider this other example. We have a pointer in star p. When we write int x equals to 20, we are declaring another variable x equals to 20. Now when we see this p is a wild pointer. But now we are assigning p equals to m percent x. So once we are assigning a value to p, P is no longer a wild pointer. Let us see this in a program. What happens when we use a wild pointer? I'll write here int star p and I won't assign any value to this and int x equals to 20. Now let's say we want to see what value is pointed to by p. So we'll write printf value stored in pointer p is equals to percentage t and we give p here let's run this and see what happens let's run this and the value stored is some garbage value we don't know what it is let us now see what is the value stored at this so we'll have to dereference it printf memory location so you see here we also get a warning here that p is used uninitialized let us now run this and it says the memory location pointed to by p is equals to zero and we have another garbage value here so this is a bad idea to use a pointer uninitialized let us now assign or initialize the value of p we'll write p equals to m percent x and now let us see the values of p we'll copy the same printf statements and let us build it again so the first one is still a garbage value. Now the garbage value stored is 17744. But after we initialized the value of P that is here, the location of X is this and the value stored is 20 and 20 was the value which we assigned here. So one thing to remember is it's always a bad idea to keep a wild pointer. If anything, we should always initialize it to null, which is our second pointer type where we write star p equals to null so let's run this and see what happens so here it says the value stored in p is 0 that is the pointer is storing a value 0 and it cannot execute this line it is not able to dereference it that is why it does not execute after this point so we know that by assigning it to null it is not pointing to any random garbage location. So in your programs, it's always a good practice to initialize all your pointers to null in the beginning if you are not assigning any known location to it. And in fact, in domains like avionics or safety issues in cars or engine issue in car, you are not allowed to have uninitialized values, no uninitialized variables and no pointers either. In case the software has those kind of variables or pointers, it won't get certified. Let us now see the null pointer. 
null pointer points to nothing. So a pointer that points to nothing is called a null pointer. Some advantages are we can initialize a pointer variable when that pointer variable is not assigned any actual memory address. We can pass a null pointer to a function argument when we are not willing to pass any actual memory address. So for example, we want a function to return some values in a pointer. So we can uh, declare it as a null pointer and then pass this null pointer to the function and the function assigns it some location and sends it back. Now the third kind of pointer is dangling pointer. A dangling pointer points to a memory location that has been deleted. So if we have a memory location, we assign it to a pointer and then we delete that memory location. It becomes a dangling pointer. So the way we do it is, let's say we have a pointer here and then we are declaring some variable and assign that variable location to this pointer. So this is the block inside which the pointer is assigned some location or outside this block the ch does not have any scope. So outside this block ch does not exist. So at this location ptr becomes a dangling pointer that is outside this block ptr is a dangling pointer now. Similar thing can happen when we pass a pointer to a function but we don't take care and we declare a local variable there and assign the address of the local variable to this pointer. Let us see this behavior in a program. Let's take this program for example. So what I have done here is as a global variable I have defined int star p equals to null. This is just to initialize it to a null value. Inside main I am calling a function called sum and then I am printing the values of pointer p and the value stored in that memory location pointed by p. And what I am doing in sum is, I have three variables, a equals to 5, b equals to 6, and c equals to a plus b. And then I am assigning the location of c to p. So from our understanding of pointers, we know that c is storing a plus b that is equals to 11. And that memory location should get assigned to p. And since it's a global variable, this value should persist. So whatever is the value that is getting stored in P, the same should be reflected here. But let's run this and see what happens. So when we run this, we see the value stored in pointer P is something, but the value stored in that memory location pointed to by P is some garbage value. Now why is this? This is because initially when P was assigned the memory or location or the address of C, this might have been the location of C. But as soon as the control went back here, this location was deleted by the program and it was allocated to some other function or some other program which my computer is running and that particular program had assigned this value to this memory location. So when we print this, we are getting the memory location same as this but the value is completely different now. That is what a dangling pointer is. The memory location to which it was pointing has been deleted and now it's sort of a garbage value. The next kind is the void pointer. The void pointer in C is a pointer that is not allied with any data type. So we can have a void pointer and point it to an integer or point it to a character or point it to a float unlike the pointers which we have discussed so far. So if we declare a pointer of type int it can only point to an integer. If we declare a pointer of type char it can only point to a character. But void pointers can point to any data type. They are also known as general purpose pointers. General purpose pointers. So an example int x equals to 10 and then we write char y equals to a. So we are assigning the value of a to y void star p equals to ampersand x. So at this point p is storing the memory location of x which is an integer. But then in the next line we are writing p equals to ampersand y. So here p is now storing the memory location of y which is of type char. Let's see this in a program how we can use it and how to dereference it. So in this program I have taken a void pointer void star ptr an integer int a equals to 8, a character char ch equals to b. First I assign the address of a 
PTR equals to m percent a. Now when I print the value which is pointed by this PTR, the value stored in PTR is percentage t, and here in this line in star PTR, here I am type casting this pointer, the void pointer to type integer. So from void I am making it into an integer, and then I am assigning the address of ch that is ptr equals to m percent ch and similarly i am converting the void pointer ptr to type char char star and then with this stars i am dereferencing it so let's see run this and see what happens so see here the value of a is 8 and char is p so when we run this we get the value stored by ptr is 8 and in the next line we get the value stored by ptr or in ptr is b so we took one pointer of type void and we type casted it to we pointed it to integer type casted the pointer to integer and dereferenced it then we pointed it to a character type casted it to character and dereferenced it again and we are getting both the values so void pointers act as a generic pointers or general purpose pointers and we can use them to point to any kind of data type. There are also many uh, some other classifications like near pointer, far pointer, but let's not get into all those now. This would be more than sufficient for you to know about pointers.